Hi. Today, we will work on a very exciting problem from number theory. This is from ISI entrance 2014. This is problem number 18. But it may as well come in mathematical Olympiads, American math competitions, and so on. So it's a very exciting problem from number theory. Number theory is one of the most active areas of research in mathematics. So you can definitely check that out if you have not seen it before. It says that there is a number 374, 374, and we want to find out the smallest number, capital N, such that whenever you take n consecutive numbers, at least one of them will be co-prime to 374. So I'll explain that. Suppose you take n consecutive numbers. So I'll go up to a plus capital N minus 1. So for example, if n was 3, then the n consecutive numbers would be a, a plus 1, a plus 2, where a can be any number. So I am writing down arbitrary set of three numbers consecutive numbers and if I want to do it for capital N if the number of numbers is also a symbol capital N then I can always write it as a a plus 1 a plus 2 up to a plus n minus 1 you can always think of it like this that you are starting with a plus 0 since you are starting with a plus 0 you have to to get n numbers capital n number of numbers this sum should be capital n minus 1 okay so you want at least one of them one of them to be co prime with 374 now you want this to happen always so again, coming back to the example, if you take capital N equal to 3, what you are essentially saying is that whenever you take three consecutive numbers, one of them will be co-prime to 374. Now this is a very strong thing to say. You have total liberty to choose three numbers from wherever you want. Three consecutive numbers. You can choose three numbers from wherever you want. And you are saying, whenever I choose three numbers, three consecutive numbers, at least one of them will be co-prime to 374. Of course, three doesn't work. We can easily check that. We want to find out the smallest number, capital N, for which we can say such a thing. Maybe capital N is 5. Maybe capital N is 23. Maybe there are 23 numbers Maybe whenever you take 23 consecutive numbers, at least one of them is co-prime to 374. The main idea is you have to find the number of numbers such that whenever you take that many numbers, one after another, one of them will be co-prime to 374. Okay? So let's start some analysis. And in these sort of problems, the main idea is to factorize the number. By the way, if you don't know what is co-prime, it means that HCF of 374 with that number, whatever number is, is 1. Then that number, let's call it x, then x is, then we say x is co-prime to 374. Right? So that's the definition. If you're not familiar with HCF, it's often called GCD in some parts of the world. It basically means that the greatest common divisor between 374 and X is 1. So there is no common divisor between 3. No prime number that divides both 374 and the number in question that we are testing out. So let's start the problem. It's a very interesting one. We will start with 374 and try to factorize it. So I have done it before. You can try it on your own as well. It's very simple. It's 2 times 11 times 17. You can easily check that. Okay. So now 
let's try to build this number of numbers, okay? So look, you don't want the numbers to be divided by two. We want at least one number to be not divisible by two. So we want at least one number to be odd, right? So even if you take two numbers, that easily works out. Of course, if a is even, a plus one is odd. If a plus one, a is odd, then a plus one is even. So whenever you take two numbers, at least one of them will not be, well, exactly one of them will not be um, even, so will be odd. So in fact, you can say in these two numbers, exactly one of them will be co-prime with two. You can't say which one because, of course, you don't, you have no control over A, but you know that at least one of them will be co-prime with 2. But there is a problem. Maybe the number that is co-prime with 2, maybe the number that is co-prime with 2, maybe the odd number, maybe A plus 1 is odd, maybe that number is divisible by, is divisible by 11. Maybe that can, maybe that uh, that happens. That can happen actually. For example, if you take, uh, let's say, thirty-two and thirty-three. Of course, thirty-three is co-prime with two. Co-prime with two, but not, but not co-prime with eleven. So, if you take two consecutive numbers they will certainly not be co-prime with 374. We just found a counter example because 32 is has a common factor 2 with 374 and 33, though it's odd, it avoids the 2. Though it's odd, it avoids the 2. But 33 is not co-prime with 374 because they have 11 in common. Like 11 divides both of them. So of course, the answer, the smallest number of numbers cannot be 2. Let's make it four then, because you'll see in a moment, then we can easily avoid 11. Look, if we have a, a plus one, a plus two, a plus three, four consecutive integers, we know whenever we have four consecutive integers, exactly two of them are odd. So maybe a and a plus two is odd, okay? now. Their odd means they are co-prime with 2. So both a and a plus 2 are co-prime with 2. Co-prime with 2 is a fancy way of saying that the number is odd. Okay. All right. So now can both of them be divisible by 11? Well, that's completely impossible because if A is divisible by 11, if 11 divides A, if that happens, then it 11 cannot divide A plus 2. 11 cannot divide A plus 2. Why? Because once you have a number that is divisible by 11, the next number that is divisible by 11 is exactly 11 units away. You have to add 11 to get to the next number that is divisible by 11. And these are all consecutive numbers. So certainly if a, 11 divides A, then 11 cannot divide A plus 2. Or if 11 divides A plus 2, then 11 cannot divide A. So just by taking four numbers, we are sure that there is at least one number in this list that is co-prime with both 2 and 11. Take the two odd numbers. If, even if one of them is divisible by 11, the other one will not be divisible by 11. So there are, there is at least one number in consecutive four numbers in any consecutive four numbers four numbers that is co-prime that is co-prime with both two 
both 2 and 11. That's awesome. We just need to avoid 17 now. You see the strategy that I'm using here, right? Now, maybe the A is divisible by 11. A is divisible by 11. Div or 11 divides A. Maybe that happens. We know that A 11 cannot divide A plus 2. But could it happen that 17 divides A plus 2? divides a plus 2. Could that happen? Could that happen? 17 divides a plus 2. Can we have two odd numbers? Of course, a and a plus 2 are odd because they, that's why we are looking at them because then only they will be co-prime with 2. So we have two consecutive odd numbers. Is it possible that one of them is divisible by 11 and the next one is divisible by 17 and then we are ruined because even if a plus 2 is odd and not divisible by 11, it's not co-prime with 374. Not co-prime with 374 because 374 and a plus 2 will have 17 as a common divisor. So could that happen? So yeah, that could happen actually. Why? Let me explain that to you. Maybe a is congruent to 0 mod 11. That is a is divisible by 11. This is a fancy way of saying a is divisible by divisible by 11. Okay, and of course a is an odd number, a is an odd number. So we can write a as 2j plus 1, right? 2j plus 1 is 0 mod 11. Because any odd number any odd number can be written as 2 times something plus 1. Okay. Now, what about the next odd number? What about a plus 2? a plus 2 is 2j plus 1 plus 2, right? Is it possible that 2j plus 1 plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 17? We want both of them to happen simultaneously. Could that happen? Okay, let's do a little bit more calculation. 2j plus 1 is divisible by 11. 0 mod 11 means it's divisible by 11. That's our assumption. Then 2j plus 1, 2j plus 1 is equal to some 11 times odd, right? Because it's divisible by 11 and it's an odd number. So it's 11 times some 2, let's call it r plus 1. Or this is... 22R plus 11. So let's replace that. 22R plus 11 plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 17, which basically means that this is divisible by 17. I'm just using both languages, even if you don't know modular arithmetic, you know division, which helps. Okay, so 22R plus 11 plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 17, or 22R plus 13 is equals to some 17 times quotient. So can we find, can we find solutions to this equation? Integer solutions. Are there integers R and Q which satisfy this equation? Let me write it in a little bit different way. It's 22 times R plus negative 17 times Q is equal to negative 13. Just jumbled it around a little bit. So now we are at the very end of this problem. We will claim that there is a solution. There are solutions to this equation. Why? Why? Why are there integer solutions to this equation? Do not try to find actually one because it will be very tedious. One can actually compute it, but it will be very tedious. But you can use a theorem called Bezout's theorem. And I have, I'll link a description, link, uh, put a link of that video in the description. It's a very exciting fundamental theorem in number theory. You can use Bezout's theorem to show that this particular 
equation has integer solutions because the GCD of 22 and negative 17 is 1. So whenever GCD of these two numbers is 1, the coefficients is 1, this equation will have solutions. So we discussed this in the number theory module, the linear Diophantine equations uh, section of our Math Olympiad and ISI and CMI entrance programs. I'll put a link in the description for that program. It is, uh, these videos are sponsored by Chinta. So you can look, in, look into those um, programs as well. If you want, you can enroll in them. But the main idea is this, that you look at this equation and you see that, okay, we have an equation with the coefficients with, whose GCD is one. Therefore, there is a solution. There are actually infinitely many solutions to this equation. And finding an, uh, an exact solution would be a bit more challenging because it's very large. The numbers are very large. I mean, three digit numbers will come up. But the main idea is that there are solutions to this. So it could happen that a is divisible by 11 and a plus 2 is divisible by 17. So these four consecutive numbers may not have uh, any number whose GCD is 1 with 374. So your only option would be to increase it two more, a plus 4, a plus 5, just add two more numbers. If you add just one more number, this one could be even. So this one could be odd divisible by 11, this one is even. Odd divisible by 17, this one is even. So none of these five numbers, uh, actually none of, these, none of these five numbers are co-primed with 374. That could happen, we proved it theoretically. So A plus five, the next number, will certainly be co-primed with 374 because of the simple fact that even if this one is divisible by 17, a plus 5 will not be divisible by 17 because the next number that, that is divisible by 17 is 17 units away. Similarly, a plus 5 will not be divisible by 11 either because it's in the next number after a that is divisible by 11 is 11 units away. So you see how we constructed the number of numbers that will always work. So number theory can be very, really exciting. Uh, check the links in the description. I think you will find more resources. Thank you for watching this video. By the way, if you can find actual solutions, integer solutions to this equation, please put a comment in the comment section and let us know what you have found. There are infinitely many of them. Even if you find four such numbers, A is odd, A plus one even, a plus 2 odd, A plus 3 even, and A is divisible by 11, A plus 2 is divisible by 17. If you can find an example, an actual example, there are such examples, we proved that. But if you, if you can find an actual example, put it in the comment section and we will see that. Um, thank you for watching this video. Keep on doing great mathematics. I'll see you in the next one.